What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and today I wanted to have a really quick look at a new workaround opportunity that we have when working with Studio One version 3.2. So I've got a set of multi-track drums here, and let's just go ahead and enable the automation view for all of these tracks here. Okay, so now we are able to see all the automation here. As you can see, we don't currently have any automation written, but um, let's take a look at, you know, a common type of workflow thing that you might want to do. So let's say that we wanted to do some automation on these drum tracks, and we wanted that automation to happen across all tracks. So one of the things we have with Studio One is that there's really, before up until 3.2, there was really no easy way to do that. But I want to show you a really cool trick that we can do now in 3.2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select all of these tracks here, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to add a VCA channel for these selected tracks. And we'll just close our console for a second. Now you can see that it's automatically created this automation lane, and that's because I have this preference enabled, automatically create automation tracks for channels. So anytime we create a bus, an effects track, or a VCA, it's automatically going to give us that automation lane. Okay, let's switch back to our automation view here for a second. So in previous versions of Studio One, if we wanted to create any automation on a specific section, we'd have to highlight that section, and we'd have to literally do that for every single section, and we'd have to make those adjustments. But now in 3.2, what we can do is we can highlight the section that we want to work with. So for example, let's say that we wanted to create a volume ramp on this section over here. So starting right at the beginning here, what we could essentially do is we could do that with the VCA fader. So what I'll do is I'll just lock down a node here. I'll take this one, I'm gonna bring this down and I can position it to wherever I need. I can position it to the very start here. And then I can create any, any curves or anything like that. And you can see in the background that all this automation is updating in the background of the track here. Now the individual track levels themselves, they're still stationary. As you can see, we don't have any automation written on these, but they are going to respond to the VCA automation. So if I hop over to my mixer here for a second, watch these, these tracks here, they're gonna start to ramp up. And they're gonna ramp all the way till we get here until they're at full volume. Okay, so even though we haven't written that information, they're responding to the volume automation of this VCA fader. And then we could do other adjustments as well. So let's say from this section over here, I wanted to take everything and I wanted to bring down this whole section on all of the drums. Well, we could just go up to the VCA fader and I could bring this down over here. And now the drum tracks over here, they're gonna respond to that volume automation as well. Even though we haven't written anything, let's go back here. They've just responded and watch as they pass this section here. Okay, so let's say that you're happy with all of that automation that you've written. You're completely happy with it and you just wanna kinda of commit that and render it down into the tracks. Well, it's very easy, all we have to do is right click the VCA, merge the VCA automation. So this gives us a powerful tool that allows us to make global adjustments to, to our tracks, anything that we group, and it doesn't even have to be a group, we can just create you know, temporary groups just by assigning different tracks to a VCA fader. And then if we're happy and we wanna render that automation to the actual tracks, we can just do this. And then of course we have our VCA track here, and we can of course make adjustments to our VCA, and this will trim everything either up or down. So for example, if I was happy with all that and I just wanted to trim that back, I could easily do that, merge this VC automation, and now I've just you know rendered that or merged that automation into my source tracks. So the other cool thing about this is it responds relative to the automation that's already existing on a track. So now we have automation written to these tracks here. You can see in this particular section that everything comes down, and then as it comes to this point, it's going to jump back up. Open up my console. So let's say that we wanted to grab that tom fill there. So what I can do is I'll just use one of the new shortcuts we have. Let's just zoom into this over here. Now what I could do is essentially I could just highlight this selection over here. I could bring this up here. And then why don't we use some of the new keyboard shortcuts that we have available here for this one. And I could bring this one and I could take this up as well. And then we'll just deselect this and we'll zoom back out to our previous level. So now if I wanted to make any adjustments on top of that automation, for instance, 
over the same spot here, what happens if I wanted to make some, do some, some type of curve here with my VCA fader? Now what we can do is we'll see that where the automation where we've written over here, it's kind of a representation or it's responding to both sets of automation. So some tracks over here, you can see that they all look the same. They have this gray line in the background, but the tracks, the Tom tracks that we've added the volume automation, they look slightly different. So again, we could just go ahead and merge this VC automation. And now you can see that our Toms are responding differently. They're responding to both the VCA automation that we wrote and the individual track layer automation. So this is a really powerful tool to allow you to quickly adjust things. And then, you know, when you're happy with your automation, you could just go ahead and remove this track altogether if you didn't want it. And then essentially now we have all of our tracks, we have all the automation, but we were very quickly able to write that. So if I decided, oh, you know what? I don't like this ramp. I want to change that. I could just select all these nodes, delete it, and then I'm going to select all these tracks here. Let's just go ahead and add another VCA fader really quickly. So now I could just go ahead and I could change the automation on this particular section here if I wanted it to be different. And, you know, essentially whatever I needed to do. And then, of course, I have the option to either leave that automation on the VCA because the tracks are going to respond to that automation. Or we can render it down, which is merge VCA automation. And then it's just going to fold back into all the source tracks. So that's a really easy workaround we have now when we want to do automation to group tracks. And the really cool thing about VCA faders is we could have two VCA faders. We could have a VCA fader controlling all of these, but then if we wanted to do some other types of automation, like for example, let's say that we wanted to have a VCA fader for controlling the toms. And let's say that we also wanted to have a VCA fader for controlling the overheads. So we might want to have, you know, different automation for both the overheads and the toms. So in certain areas where we may have a, you know, a section where we have a tom fill, I could just go across this selection and then I would go to my tom VCA fader. I have to make sure VCA2 and I could just bring that up on VCA2. So let's go to our VCA2. I could dial that up. And then if I wanted to make some adjustments to the overheads here, so for example, in this section over here, I might want the overheads to come up. I could just go to my VCA fader that's controlling my overheads. Just as a side note, I would always usually name my VCAs or visually we can see which tracks they're connected to. And then of course we can take that VCA automation, just close our mixer for a second, and we can basically just merge this down into our tracks here. So let's just merge the VCA automation for both VCA two and three. That's made that change. We can merge this. It's a real quick and easy way. And the cool thing about this too, is we can also do this in touch mode in our different automation modes. So we really have a lot of power now with using VCA faders. And we also have a really quick way to be able to make adjustments and edit or add automation for different groups of tracks when working in Studio One. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.